previously on the Downscaling Chronicles. The GBS Control is an excellent 480p downscaler, taking less than a frame to delete an entire set of lines for crispy 240p video. But its inability to handle greater resolutions has inevitably made it irrelevant to downscale some modern consoles. I explored the scenario of pairing the GBS with another scaler to drop 720 and 1080p to 480p, ready for the GBS to further downscale. 1080 down to 240p resulted in a sharp scale, but the offensive overscan rendered this input resolution next to useless. However, the HDMI component scaler did a fair job at line averaging 720 to 480p so the GBS could output a somewhat sharp 240p image. Screen tearing aside, double downscaling through the two devices can be a viable and inexpensive option. But before the release of Rama's GBS control project, there were rumours of another budget solution. And this mysterious combo was dubbed the Extron interface trick. The Extron Emosha was once considered the best downscaler for CRT gamers, as it could accept 480p VGA to downscale not only to 480i, but with the flick of the non-interlace switch, would output 240p. They soon shot up in price and dried up in supply, making them next to impossible to find. I believe it was Fudo that discovered the Extron downscaling trick, detailing in his Hazard City Scanlines Demystified write-up how to achieve downscaling on par with the Extron Emosha. Similar to the GBS Scaler combo from the last episode, this is also a dual device setup. Except this time, only one device is technically downscaling, because the second in the chain is actually an RGB sync processing interface, and they work in tandem to become the poor man's Extron Emosha. As Extron further developed their Emosha series, they later omitted the non-interlace switch so they could only output plain old 480i. I had high hopes when I bought the Analog Way Scan Vision 470 as these are often rebadged Extron Emosha scalers. However, it was internally the same as a Super Emosha 2, so no 240p downscaling. The Emosha series later became the video scan converter line of units, hence the name VSC. And this VSC 500 will accept VGA 1080i, 720 and 480p to downscale to 480i. The second unit in the downscaling chain is an Extron RGB interface with DDSP, not to be mistaken for the wrestler DDP. These are essentially sync processors that transform any type of RGB sync into another. Some RGB interfaces have the digital data sync processing switch hidden inside the unit. And lucky for me, it's one of the accessible dip switches on the Extron RGB 580XI. Apparently due to an oversight in design, when DDSP is off, an incoming 480i signal causes an offset in the vertical sync interval to make the CRT only draw to one of the CRT's set of fields, therefore not actually downscaling by definition as it still retains all of the resolution. But just think for a second what that means. Constantly striking an interlay signal to only one field will result in a flicker fest. But then you go back to the VSC unit and crank up the flicker filter and what do you know? 240p. It sounds witchcrafty and let me tell you, when it works, it works well. Or maybe I should say, if it works. Here's the downscaling chain from start to end. First an HDMI to VGA DAC is connected to the Extron VSC to downscale to 480i. Then the 480i RGB signal goes into the Extron RGB interface via a BNC to VGA cable. And finally, the RGBS signal goes into the CRT 
in this case a Sony BVM 20 F1. I would caution against using the interface without properly dialing the RGB gain output using an oscilloscope, as it can run a little high, and even my BVM 20 F1, which is more tolerant of higher voltage analog video, would randomly trigger the overload light. So using my little scope, I reduced the video level to a standard 700 millivolt, so it's safe no matter what display I output to. Now onto some lag numbers, 1080i and 720p downscaled to 480i was only 0 to 16 milliseconds, or up to one frame of variable lag. These RGB interfaces are lagless sync processors, so turning off DDSP to drop the video to 240p won't add any additional lag. 480p had the same range of lag, but it consistently added only 10 microseconds every second, until it reached one frame and would inevitably reset back to zero. As for scaling methods, 720 and 480p down to 240p appear to evenly line drop, and with DDSP on to output 480i, the image is buttery smooth. That's if the flicker filter is turned off. But in 480i, when the filter's turned all the way up to 3, every outline is jagged and has absolutely no benefit. As I mentioned before with the 240p trick, the flicker filter needs to be turned up to maximum to get stable progressive scan lines. The VC500 won't accept 1080p, but will take 1080i. And incoming flicker warning, it's sharp and only flickers on the Jaggy's test pattern circle. But I just don't see any reason to use this input resolution when 720p is available. I discovered a huge setback with vertical frequency, and of course PAL video is the culprit, as the VSC won't accept a 50Hz input. My PAL region PS3 outputs 576p, which is the 50Hz cousin to 480p, but only while in the XMB menu, so I had to navigate the menu using a compatible display until the Blu-ray would kick into 60Hz to see a downscaled image on the BVM. And then I got my second red flag the next time I powered on the Extrons, where it wouldn't kick in a 240p straight away. Sometimes I had to shift or resize the picture, and even reboot the devices with DDSP on. Eventually it would give me 240p, and who knows if maybe it just needed some warming up and I was falsely confirming that whatever I was altering at the time fixed the issue. Let's see up close why some people call this pseudo 240p. Zooming into the BVM 20 F1 and turning the flicker filter up and down demonstrates how the flickering interlacing fields land consistently to only one set of fields. Then with the filter turned up to the max, the picture within these fields stabilizes but there remains some minuscule jitter which I only see when zooming in this close. Maybe it's just inherent to the CRT, so let's compare 720 downscale to 240p against the TV1750 to see if the tremor persists. It's much less apparent on the Corio 2, so the jitter is in fact the result of the Extron interface trick. Having these side by side, the Corio 2 is miles ahead in sharpness and clarity, and that's with the Corio's line averaging method, which usually gives a softer picture. I guess it comes down to the first instance of downscaling with the VSC, outputting interlaced video, rather than straight out line dropping and blending. Not only do I prefer downscaling 3D games to 480i, but also games based on animation series that are faithful to the original. South Park The Fractured Butthole in 480i looks exactly how I watched the series on a CRT growing up. And aspect ratio aside, it makes a strong case for downscaling to 480i, and it genuinely feels like my character is all part of the show. 
The 240p downscale is further softened when the RGB interface unknowingly draws to the incorrect field, causing some outlines to display over two scan lines instead of one. And thanks to those picture controls on the VSC 500, the image can be shifted prior to the RGB interface dropping it to 240p, producing much cleaner results. The VSC's auto set function stretches and centers the video to fit the screen almost perfectly every time. And if not, then the bottom left can be dragged for aspect preserve scaling, or you can adjust individual HV size and position. This means it'll thin and squeeze just about any 16x9 video to fit a 4x3 display. And these are the picture controls I've been so desperately wanting in a downscaler. As I showed in the widescreen CRT video, an Extron VSC is the answer to the PSP's window display, allowing the video to be stretched to the full edges of the screen, although with a softer image. Unfortunately, like the HDMI scaler from the last episode, there were instances of screen tearing that seemed to be induced by particular acts of motion. I was so far impressed with the robust picture controls that I couldn't wait to try this on my main display in my setup, my 15kHz widescreen CRT. In particular, I wanted to see if 240p still had that jitter on a lower TV line tube, and looking up close, it's still 480i. I rechecked the video on the BVM and it was definitely outputting 240p. Without turning anything off, I reconnected to the Grundig and it's still 480i. What the f is going on? This made no sense. I had rock solid 240p on the BVM 20F1 but 480i on the Grundig. I was hoping the Frame Meister could tell me more about the signal, but Sync was messed up and read as 480i anyway. So then what's the common denominator that allows the BVM to display in 240p, but not the Grundig? Is it the RGB interface, consumer versus pro, or is it just the way the CRT internally processes Sync? Lucky for me, I have not one, but two RGB 580XI units, both fully recapped, and still no change. Then what if it's the CRT? I tried this on the Sharp VCR combo, PVM9041, 9L3, PVM14 and 20L5, and they all displayed in 480i. I even tried running video through a sync stripper, and through the G-SCART with sync regeneration, but no matter what I tried, it was still 480i. This was a BVM 20F1 exclusive party and no one else was on the guest list. I was reassured when I saw that Fudo, who wrote about the interface trick, also had a BVM 20F1. But then I saw this video by Energizer Bunny. It is the PlayStation 2 running a pseudo 240p image. And he got the 240p trick working on a consumer Sony Trinitron. I reached out to Retro Bobberino through his supporter Q&A and echoed my experience in that it is in fact very much display specific. This pretty much puts the nail in the coffin for the Extron 240p trick. It all makes sense now why I've read about so many others that couldn't get this working even though they had the same Extron equipment as the few that could. And as a member of the Extron Interface Secret Society, I'd never recommend this for 240p downscaling. At least I got to somewhat showcase the Extron VSC and those picture dials are nothing short of incredible. If you don't mind the occasional screen tear, the VSC500 is a really amazing standalone 480i downscaler, and it also could be paired with the GBS control for 240p downscaling, much like I featured in the last episode. I'm disappointed this pseudo 240p won't be experienced by many that try, and the sheer elusiveness of the Extron interface trick makes it even more of a fascinating oddity. But to sum it all up, 
unless you already have the equipment and an anointed CRT, don't try this at home. But if you have tried it, then please let me know your experience in the comments and stay tuned for more downscaling. Happy gaming.